Welcome back everybody. Thanks for joining us today. We're talking about tips and tactics for hunting public land bucks. This is actually kind of a viewer requested episode. On the last video, Andrew McCann commented, can you guys do some top 10 lists? And Andrew, yes we can. Appreciate the idea. And this top 10 is gonna be about tactics that we like to use on public land. Obviously these work just as well on private land. And as you'll see, it doesn't always result in a filled tag, but they tend to create a lot of opportunities. And that's the fun thing about hunting whitetails. There's so many different strategies you can employ and it changes throughout the country depending on what kind of you know, habitat or terrain that you're hunting in and depending on what kind of opportunities and challenges you have in your area. And also let us know in the comments if there's any video requests that you might have, any top 10 list ideas or any tactics that you like to use that have worked well for you. There's tons of fresh deer tracks down there where most of the deer have been congregating each night when they feed. Like we mentioned before, we're not real sure what the plant is that they're feeding on, but they've been eating it all year in these river bottoms and they're digging it up out of the snow out there. It looks like hogs have been rooting around out there for the last few days or so many tracks, but. See it? It's looking back too. All this stuff is browsed down. It is this plant, whatever it is. And you can see it's actually still kind of green. That's what all those deer are feeding on. Very interesting, just natural browse out here that the deer are targeting. That's laying right here, Greg. How about that? That's just cool to hunt them on a natural food source like that out yeah. here on public. Absolutely. That's an overlooked spot. Last year, this spot was underwater. I was kayaking in to about right here and then would get out and I, I ran a trail camera that we never actually came in and hunted this spot, but we ran a trail camera a couple hundred yards away from here and got a lot of activity throughout the year and especially in the late season. Yep, that's interesting from one year to the next how things change and that's something we talk about all the time on public land. In this situation, you know, the water levels changed and basically reshaped the entire makeup of the uh, landscape down here in this bottom and uh, it created when that when that lake receded when the water receded it created tons of that natural food down here on these mud flats and stuff me and Dylan are heading into a spot tonight that me and Grant scouted yesterday evening found a ton of tracks down in this bottom there's a ton of cuckleburrs and a couple ridges that run up with oaks on them that we think could be really good. This one in particular that we're going to go up in. There's a bunch of tracks coming down from it and on the flat ways in there's a cedar thicket that they could be bedding in. We're going to slip up there really quiet, look for sign, and hopefully find a good setup. It's 440 and we're about to climb up this tree right here skinny guy but we found quite a bit of fresh sign right here we've been following rubs all the way up here which is exactly what we were hoping for there's a thick cedar patch right over here to our west southeast wind blowing like this we're getting going just got set up in the tree both the channels tonight and uh we're feeling pretty confident about our setup Eh. 
Is that the stud in here? Oh, like the dominant part? Yeah, he's the one baby sees Rob's for sure. Holy crap, dude. Holy crap, dude. That's insane. Like, I'm so proud. Oh, 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 oh. Are you kidding me? Let's go! Yes. Early season? That's awesome right there, man. That's Are you sweet. kidding me? Yes! <laughs> And like we walked in, me and Grant came in, saw the tracks in the cove, we're like, all right, we need to probably hunt this at some point. Me and Dylan came in and started seeing sign immediately when we popped up on this little oak ridge here. And there's thick bedding with cedars and stuff. And just followed it until we made the decision that it was fresh enough sign to set up on and he came out of there right where we thought. Set up oh yeah, just yeah, gotta be on. close to him. And it's got to be like the first time in is your best chance for sure. Yeah. Ready to just be flexible with it. Yeah, I mean, those saddles are the ticket. Yeah, like, you just nice. wear them things. You don't even have, like, you don't even hardly feel them. And, like, I've been saying that to him all week. Mm -hmm. Like, these things are so nice because you can just wear them. We, during his buck, we had them on. And then we're like, all right, we got to be on the ground, set mm -hmm. up on the ground. The, and, the killer thing is you can come in with a ghillie and the saddles and you're right, you're like yeah, covered you for every situation everything. You need, possible. It's just it's very, very effective. It's about five o'clock. Grant and I headed back into the same river piece that we hunted yesterday when we had that encounter with that nice buck. There's three fresh scrapes underneath this pin oak right here at 15 yards. The trail that that doe and that buck were on was right here at 15 steps on the other side of the tree. There's a fresh scrape at the head of it, fresh rub down there too. This pin oak's got a ton of cover in it with trails all around us. We're just right in the middle of this bedding area right here. just heard something sounds like a buck making a scrape down here. There he is, big buck, big buck coming right at us. Coming right at us. Big buck. Big one. Did you die in there? stop down there slightly quarter and two he was coming right for these scrapes right here the gray and i walked by he just stopped right there for some reason something i don't know if he just got downwind of our crown scent right there or what and he was coming straight for us he was going to end up right there at that scrape but he stopped about six seven yards short of it oh man i just that is so frustrating man and look at how early it is. It's an hour before dark in October in the bedding area, though. I can't tell you how many of them have got away because of that last five, ten yards. So close. So close, guys. It's about four o'clock. Logan and I came back in here, we paddled further down the creek. And as we were paddling in, we came across this massive creek crossing right here. And that's basically what we're set up on. The creek crossing's 22 yards away. And we're right in the creek channel. The reason we decided to do this is because we felt like it was silly to miss an opportunity on that crossing. There was buck tracks going back and forth right on it. 
So we just pulled the canoe up. The canoe's actually right down there. We've got shots to the right, and we've got shots to the left on the other side of the creek. Basically, if any deer is paralleling this creek, we've got a really good chance of getting a shot. Like I said, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with this setup, but we got a, the ability to move. I'm probably gonna be able to stand up the whole time and just watch for deer coming, and then just crouch down as need be. Real nice buck. Up in the timber. Was that not the wildest thing that ever just happened, buddy? <laughs> it's crazy. We've hunted back here for, I guess this would be the, this is our third day back here this season. We've seen this buck and two other shooters. I feel real relieved. He's stiff. I mean, he ran up here and fell down. Like, he was down instantly, just like everybody's telling me, I guess. For October, that's about as good as it gets. That's actually just for the rut in general, about as good as it gets. Ted and I went in there that first day, you know, and we just kind of went in there with the goal to figure out if we could get the canoe back in there and we would be able to go in there and hunt with low impact. That canoe allowed us to keep going in there, hunt it as aggressively as we wanted with spooking, you know, really minimal deer. There was very few deer that ever got downwind of us. There was very few deer that ever saw us. And just based off of what we were seeing back there, you know, we just had to keep going for it. I think the biggest takeaway is just finding that hot sign and then finding a creative way to access this spot. We got a fresh scrape right down here over my shoulder. 24 yards away. Most of the buck nest bedding is back behind me. We got a northeast wind that's taking our scent back down here to the creek that we walked in on. We bumped two small bucks on the way in. I don't know if Ted managed to get any footage of them or not, but they were in the satellite bedding just off to the side of the primary bedding, which is behind me. Usually if there's deer in the satellite bedding, that means that there's something older and bigger in the primary stuff. That's at least what I'm hoping on. You can see that big timber. That's where most of these bucks were at last year when all the acorns were dropping on a heavy acorn year. That timber's loaded with oaks and the deer get scattered throughout. It's a giant block of timber. But on a year when there's not as many acorns like this year, they move back down into these creek bottoms. Oh, there's a buck, good buck, right here, right here, don't move. He just stood up. Oh my, big one, big one, big one. That's how close you set up on these mature bucks. We're talking about just off wind all the time. With folks, they're always asking about what a just off wind means. You're set up for the buck to be in the spot. They're gonna bed out here in this buck nest on a northerly wind of some kind. 
but he stood up and he'd come and ride at the tree. Oh my gosh. Five more yards and he's in the wide open right there. But that's a brood of a deer. Like he's, yeah, old and big. That's just everything you ever want right there. It's 515. We just about killed a mature buck, so we better start glassing because your chances are really good that there's another shooter around this field. It's a little after seven o'clock right now, and first thing, I had a fawn come in behind me here. A few days ago, Jake and I hunted, and we saw a bunch of does and a couple of small bucks come out of this bedding cover. So this morning, I came in and I'm set up on the back side of it. Speaking of cruising, there's a buck right there. But that's exactly what I'm wanting to see this morning, that cruising activity on the back side of this bedding area. And one thing we've noticed here in the last couple of days is a lot of bucks are getting freed up from does and are starting to cruise again. So my plan for this morning was to get in close to this bedding area. The way this spot sets up, like I've said, is I've got thick cover in front of me. Off to my left, up against the edge of the slough, there's a really high stem density cover as well. And that thick cover kind of funnels down and ends right here by the stand. So this morning I've come into the back side of that thick cover with the wind coming from the southeast, so blowing from that bedding area. So I can just scent check as he's cruising along the back side of this thick cover. I really like the way it sets up, it just makes a lot of sense. down. Oh, big eight pointer. Caught me completely off guard. Made a quick hunt of it. Happened just the way I hoped it would. Buck cruising the back side of this bedding area. Thank you. I can see him right through there. Oh yeah. Very, I've never been back in here. This open, like it makes a lot of sense. And everything here just kind of came together. I mean, starting when you and Ted were hunting here in October. Mm -hmm. You guys realized there was a bunch of deer back in here and you got an area where you know there's a bunch of does, just keep, keep hunting at it, keep not at bad. it. Yeah, I mean, it, that's been good. I mean, it's probably been as good of a, a week of November, mid-November that I can ever remember yeah. around here. All right, folks, all you got to do is get your lunch out and you're going to spot a good herd. <laughs> it's two days in a row we sit down and turn on the jet boil. Big boy bedded. And he's in a bad spot. He's bedded with water up against his back. He's basically got one escape. So he might be able to drop off this, get down to the ground, get on that side of the water, but stay on the inside of the bank and take it right to him. But we got enough wind today that we're in good shape and we can actually see this one bedded. Assuming he's got a doe. But that's what they do. I mean, we've been talking about it. If you can ever get yourself into a position where you can see something similar to this, do it. I mean, we just got to make a game plan here and get after the son of a gun. Dude, it's just awesome, man. It's just awesome. There's nothing else to it. We're in the home stretch now, really. Didn't take that long. We're just gonna keep hugging this bank, try to get across. Like I said, we're on an island and he's on the mainland. So I'm hoping we can easily get across water. That's gonna be the toughest part. From here, if we get to that log jam, then he's like 50 yards from that log jam. But 
Widow's looking the other way. They're a little bit further than you think. 60, probably 60. Good. It sounded like Puh. I saw blood just pouring, but like I don't know. I'm pretty beside myself right now, cause like everything about that shot felt right. I held the jaw for a long time and I was fatigued, but like I really tried to make sure that I was settled on him, and like I really thought when I was, when he's standing up there, I was like he's gonna go down. It's November 11th. It's your birthday. Big two five. I can rent a car now. We got super high winds all throughout the day today. It's gonna to be blowing like 30 miles an hour. Super good conditions today for ground hunting and still hunting. So we're gonna take advantage of it and probably be moving around a lot today. Hopefully we can find uh, some cover where we can get out of the wind and I'd imagine that's where the deer are gonna be. So let's get in there. It wasn't even little stuff, it was bigger branches that are like this big round that wasn't going to shoot through it. If he had just taken one more, one or two more steps to the left. We'll just keep doing what we've been doing in all these other spots is just walking, trying to get eyes on bucks that are cruising or maybe got a doe. It's pretty open and the conditions are right to be able to spot them and, and then if we get to a spot that looks like it's good to maybe do some rattling or calling, we'll do that. But getting out of the wind has been the key today so we're just going to kind of keep targeting these drainage areas that have cedars in them and hopefully we can run into a buck but that's the gist of what we're doing we're just going to keep walking with the wind in our face and hit all these areas that look good on the map so hopefully we can strike one up here midday You told me that thing was gonna spook if I tried to stop him. I would never believe you. I'm drawing back, and the thing's coming straight down the trail we're on. He's like 10 yards away. I go to stop him, and like he didn't even lift his head up. I don't think. Maybe we'll see in the footage, but I didn't want him to keep coming to like four yards and then look up and bolt. I guess that's what I figured would happen. That's why I tried to stop him. But all right, that's it for today. I think got drawn back twice. I think Grant and I both said five, ten different times, this is awesome. I mean, we just kept kept walking into deer yeah. and being able to get close to them. All right, me and Dad are back at it here at that 
see our babies that we've been hunting the last few days. We came in this morning, pushed into this pond. We've been watching all these deer and they, they all end up right down here at this old pond. There's a little draw that runs up to it on the waterway right below the dam. The wind's coming straight out of the southeast. Ideally, we'd like to be in this tree right here above me or that tree right up there past Herman to the south of me. But we ran into a bunch of deer when we got in here. And the wind is kind of funky. I think this gives us the best chance, kind of sitting a little off away from the pond, to hopefully bring something into the decoy, because it's possible the deer come from the east or the west in here. And if any bucks come down that waterway or out along the edge of those woods, or up above the pond on the ridge behind us, they should be able to see the decoy. I just looked up and he was just stiff like coming in. Are you yeah. kidding me, dude? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's been dead a while. The yeah. shot was way better than I thought it was initially. Oh, I mean, they come over those hills where they can look down in here. They're using the topography because there is no yep. cover. So right, there's using no the cover. spots and stuff like that in the field where they can not be seen. And everything's visual out here kind of like it is in Kansas for a lot of them in open country. So they come over top of those hills in strategic places where they can look down in here and see everything. We we're set up down below him. So I was like, last night, I'm like, man, what if we get right here in this little patch of cover and that way we can put Herman out on the upwind side of us. And if anything crests those ridges, they'll see him and hopefully hook down there to him instead of getting our wind, which is what happened. Oh, Herman looks good. People like that old. Deer tag on there from Wisconsin too, they don't do that anymore. At least they did. And there was just a ton of bucks. I'm worked up over this. This is our chance, dude. Mm -hmm. Just moved over here, obviously bumped a bunch of deer. And luckily we've done this bump in the past. One of the things that we've noticed a couple times now, like pretty significant deer movement through this little patch of timber. But you missed that one, Eric shot that one. Yeah. We've had a lot of other chances where I could have probably shot one right up the road up here last year. I didn't have a tag at the time, but basically a couple people bumped deer towards me when I was trying to push it to Greg, and they walked, or they, yeah, they basically walked right down this edge yeah. to 30 yards from me. So hopefully that's what they do to you guys. Yeah. We're going to slip in here. Keith and I are going to ease up. Just get into a position, position where we can see a lot, and I'm pretty worked up about it. I think this might be our chance because we do have confidence in this bump. Buck, 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 Keith. Tell me when. Tell me when. I'm on it. Yes. Good? Yeah. We got him, Keith. We just shot a huge buck. <laughs> <laughs> just a tank. Get him, buddy! We got him! Oh, dude, that was just... Hey, we just said, I bet he slips out the back by himself. I would love to see the biggest one slip out the back. And he just did, Keith. It's a long time coming, buddy. <laughs> right off. Awesome. I can't even believe if it. If you do this right, they are easy shots. Because like, cause you don't bump them real hard. Like I was, what I was doing, I would just pump my shotgun to make noise to try to get them up way in front of me. 
I don't know if that's what he did, but I never saw a sign of him or heard him. And we've and we've done it at this spot, and I've missed here. Barbara shot one, and then we just shot one literally inside of the car. If we oh, go yeah. back, we can see our car. Oh, yeah. We've been really close a lot, but it all paid off today. It's like this thing right here that makes it tough. Yeah, to it, it does. Trying to film a gun hunt, where you're moving yeah. here. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's just one of those things when you've hunted enough in these situations. You've seen those bucks do that stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, two years ago, we were right down there hunting the back door. Mm -hmm. You know, we got lucky and some guys came in and drove. We almost got a shot at a really nice buck. Or when you see deer like that, a lot of times they're by themselves. <laughs> yeah. just, like, just like when that one ran by us, he was the only deer that did that pretty much. <laughs> it worked out, man. That's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yes! A mature buck will fit in the trunk, in the trunk of a Chevy Impala. <laughs> Done deal. <laughs> Couldn't be more pleased. Obviously, we've been pretty excited about this hunt. We, we finally succeeded in the second gun season here in Iowa.